Hey guys, what's up? It's Daniel McLaughlin. Today I went over to my buddy Blake's house to help him out on a pedal board build. But here's the catch. It's a bass pedal board. These are fun because they're usually pretty small and they can have some really unique pedals. Blake before was using a pedal train Nano and he was swapping out some of the pedals that he liked to use for specific gigs. But then as we got talking, we realized that he could probably do well with a pedal train mini, putting all the pedals onto the board. He also just picked up a Cali 76 by Origin Effects, which is huge by the way. So he needed a bigger pedal board. Let's go check out the build. So Blake. So Daniel. Dude, you're a, you're a Cuban trace player in Los Angeles, California. One of the best. One of the best. No, you played bass. Oh. We're building you a pedal board today. We're building bass, a pedal board. Bass player pedal board. Bass pedal. This is kind of wild. Um, you want to talk about some of the pedals on here? Sure. On here is the Noble preamp, which cool. is what I've had for a couple of years now. I love it. Dude, that thing's heavy. It is heavy. It's also a little dustier than I'd like. Maybe yeah. we can fix that oh, post. Yeah. I got a little uh I got a little pedal board tip for us that I'll uh, I'll share in a little bit. Yeah, this thing is amazing. This thing totally completely changed my sound. And also that thing is doing multiple. That's doing double Almost triple duty, huh? Because not only does that work as like a tube based oriented thing, but it also, you can go DI out from that guy. Mm -hmm. And that'll also power all the pedals on the pedal board. Yeah. So that's kind of the one stop shop solution for bass player pedal boards. It has it all. All right, what else do we got? Tuner. An old Boss Chromatic tuner. Only Tried the best. And true, classic. Um, yeah, I'm going to update this eventually, but been great so far. Yeah. Why fix what's what hasn't been broken? Right. Uh, the micro pod. Sweet. Fun for uh, epic bass solos. But now you don't use that for uh, your octave sound, do you? No. OC2. Well, OC2. Sometimes I'll use the sub, but not. No, the OC2 yeah. is the octave sound. So why OC2 and not OC3? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, well, the OC2 has is an older obviously, and it has like certain parts that they don't make anymore. I don't remember exactly what it is, but I have tried the OC3. It sounds good, doesn't sound bad. And you know, every OC2 is different too. I've had OC, played through a couple of them that are like a lot better than this one. But, and certain parts of the bass, this one sounds just incredible. Um, but yeah, there is something to be said exactly what it is, I can't remember. But Pino uses an OC2, right? Most likely. Yeah, it doesn't use an OC3, I think. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I first heard about the OC2 from Tim LaFave, I think. Okay. He also has a really good octave pedal that I'd love to get, the the Octafave. I played through one of those two, they're really cool, but it's like 600 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, and who would ever spend 600 bucks on a pedal? Well, I would. By the way, what's the next pedal? Cali 76. The big boy. Yes, the big one. By Origin Effects. Yeah. And this one's kind of the tricky one of the bunch, right? How so? Because it's enormous? Well, it's enormous, but... I know you and I have kind of gone back and forth a little while on whether we're doing 9 volt or 18 volt for this. Yes. Which I... we found out that the 18 volt is the thing that activates Luftal? Is that the name of the company? The transformer that's inside of the there? The transformer. I don't remember um, what the name of the company was, but yeah, it activates the transformer. Yeah. And so we got this exotic effects voltage doubler guy that we're going to be using. The Noble actually makes a doubler as well. And then last but not least, I'm holding it. I've been holding yes. it the whole time. What's the deal Correct. with this guy? Because this is something I don't see on a lot of bass players' pedal boards. Um, actually, my friend Justin Simoleon told me about this one. Uh, Dark Glass Electronics, and it's like overdrive, and it's one of the best overdrives I've heard for bass. We're doing it all on a Pedal Train Junior Classic. Yes. Um, I see there's already a little bit of Nice Velcro on there, and I bet you didn't buy the dual lock like I, I told you to. No, yeah. I so you not. didn't buy dual lock. Didn't buy dual lock. You didn't buy the power cables. Well, I tried to buy. You the didn't power buy I didn't try to buy the dual lock. Cable. This this is the amount of cable that he bought to try and get us through this pedal board build. Luckily, I've got plenty more. And this is the evidence audio monorail. Yes. Cool. I'm gonna pull up all this Velcro, and we're gonna use industrial Velcro instead. I hope that's okay. Yeah. We're gonna lock it all down with some tie downs and some zip ties. Should be a good build. 
Let's do it. I was walking Blake through the pedal board build as I was doing it, just in case he ever needed to do some maintenance or fix something on a gig or on the road. I try and do this with everybody that I build pedal boards for just for redundancy. All right, tip number one in terms of pedal board build. Best friend for clean pedals is just a simple paintbrush. Just dust it off. You know, it's not gonna do much, but it's also not gonna get goopy, get weird. Uh, and it's actually pretty effective at just getting dust off. Good idea. Also, what is this? What is happening here? Did oh, you do wow. that? No. <laughs> I've never opened that. I've always just used the... Yikes. That looks like an electrical accident waiting to happen. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and throw a little bit of electrical tape over those just so that it doesn't short out in any way uh, and plop it in there. Luckily, we're not using any batteries because we're using all power supplies. We're just gonna throw that in there, okay? So that we've got an idea of what the spacing is gonna be like. Um, we're going to go into the tuner. Does that sound about right? So that's gonna be the first in the chain. Mm -hmm. um, from there, you know, if this was a guitar board, our next one would be filter effects. Um, like occasionally EQs, WAs, Octaves are interesting. Oh, is that all? Is that all you got? Mm -hmm. All right. That works. So this would probably, maybe this should be in the front, on the bottom. That's in the front? Well, because look, it's like, this is gonna hang over otherwise. Well, we're not gonna hang that over. We're actually gonna put this down here. All right. um, what we wanna prioritize here is the bottom row should be stuff that you're clicking on a lot. Yeah, that's true. Somewhat. In the Cali, you're probably gonna be generally leaving it on. At least mm -hmm. you're probably gonna leave it on for the duration of a song. Um, but these you might need to put it on another time. So we can leave that here. What we can do is we can just route a cable up here mm -hmm. and swing it back around and that's no problem. That'll actually be pretty clean. Um, but the question is, do we do overdrive before or after? I think before. Before? Yeah. Overdrive before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. There we go. So that's probably gonna be our move. So our chain here, boom. Up to here, this comes down to here. This goes here, this goes here, this goes here, and we're out. Some beautiful Velcro on each of these pedals now. We're ready to kind of start applying. Blake has done a good job of putting the Velcro on. Um, dude, can you take it easy, please? Somebody ask, what's the first, uh, what's the first step? Do you, uh, cable, do you wire it up? Do you start applying the Velcro? Because we haven't, we still have the non-adhesive section here. Do we stick them down yet? What I like to do is I like to focus on edges first and then move inward while we're doing the cabling. So what we're gonna do with this specific board is I'm gonna adhere the Cali 76 and the Noble to the board and we're gonna work from there. Maybe even just the Cali 76 first because we're gonna focus on this connection. Uh, but yeah, work outward in. Make sense, Blake? Yes. I'm a big fan of the Evidence Audio Monorail and the screw-in solderless system so much so that I use it on every single board that I build. I use it for a couple reasons. The first is just how easy it is to work with. There's no solder, so it comes together fairly quickly. It's also really strong, so you get an immediate response if you've built the cable correctly because of the twisting system. After you make the cable, you can really see how tight the grip is just by giving it a light tug. The plugs actually cut a little threading into the internal copper core giving it that strength. It's nice to know that the connection is tight and solid in that stage of the building process. In addition, this could be a me only thing, but I really like to know that if a cable goes down during a show or performance or even on the road, that I can cut a new connection fairly quickly and reseat the cable. Uh, that's something that I don't feel like you get with soldered cables. Soldered cables, you'd be better off finding a spare, otherwise you're carrying around a soldering gun everywhere. Now, I'm not trying to get into the whole soldered versus solderless debate, but that's personally where I stand on this. All right, so here we got the cables set. We should be pretty much ready to wire up and organize, kind of preemptively uh, put the power cables in as well. If you look at the back. Now we just need to tidy this up. 
As soon as you can, it's worth testing out the pedal board before tidying things up and making some more permanent organizational moves. I told Blake to give it a quick go before we finish it up. He plugged it in and everything worked right off the bat, which is so great. <laughs> really after that, it just comes down to bunching up cables, zip tying channels, making sure everything's just neat and tidy and tight and we're done. I do try and keep power cables and audio cables away from each other, and if they do intersect, they cross at a 90 degree angle. This is just for redundancy within noise, although the evidence audio cables are shielded really well, so it may not be something that's super necessary. All the cables also have a little bit of slack in them, so if there ever is a catch or anything that happens that pulls, there wouldn't be too much damage to that cable connection. The pedal board is sounding great. Blake and I are really happy with how it came out. The step up adapter for the power supply is secure and in a good spot. The cables are nice and clean. I think we're done with this pedal board. There are plenty of additional pedal board tips I would like to share with you that I've got from years of just building player style pedal boards. And I'm going to share those tips with you in a new course I'm launching in about a month. And it's all about how to build a tour ready pedal board that you can maintain yourself. It's aimed at the average pedal buyer who's got a pedal board, probably takes good care of it, but wishes it was maybe a little bit more tidy. I have tips to make it look clean and stay reliable, just like the pros would build. We're not going to be talking about any crazy power supply modifications. We're going to be using the stock cables that come with the power supply. We're going to talk about solderless audio cables, but I'm going to teach you how I get a really clean pedal board that's low noise and sounds great. Again, it's coming out in a month, along with another pedal board build video for my friend RC. Anyway, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. I'll see you guys in the next one.